Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Linode. Right now, until May 31st of this year, 2020, Linode is giving every single account access to its object storage for free. So you guys can check out the link in the description tab below. If you're looking to get into web hosting, you can get $20 off. And the pricing points are pretty much geared for everybody from single developers to large companies. And if you guys are curious what object storage is, it's really a way of being able to access data without the need of having a running server. Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, what we're going to be talking about is the top 10 Python projects that are currently on GitHub right now. And the reason why I choose GitHub is it's really, it's kind of self-explanatory, but it's the world's leading software tool. It's where all the companies, even companies that didn't used to use open source software like Microsoft, they now have all their code on GitHub. In fact, they, they now own GitHub. But even before that, they started moving over to GitHub. Everybody's using it. So most projects, like it seems like 99% of them are on GitHub in one way, shape, or form. Uh, maybe 99 is too high. Maybe 90%. But either way, most projects are on GitHub. So this list is really looking at a comprised top 10. What are the biggest Python projects that are on GitHub? And how do we view that? It's simply based on how many stars they have, which means how many people thought, oh, this is a cool project. Let me start so I can remember it. All right, guys. So number 10 on this list is going to be face recognition. And this is a Python project with nearly 33,000 stars. We've seen facial recognition really blow up over the years. These days, we're unlocking our phones with our face or our eyes. And in addition to that, uh, Facebook for years now has had that feature where you upload a photo and it automatically recognizes people's faces and it tries to tag them for you. And uh, obviously with Snapchat and other apps and things of that nature, um, you can do a lot with facial recognition, obviously, and this is something that is really just getting started. Under the covers, it's all made possible through machine learning, um, and it's actually built on top of this Dlib C++ library, which is um, really doing most of the core work, but the Python project is built all around that, and you're able to literally do what would take you a lot of C++ code uh, in just a few lines of Python. All right, so number nine is going to come in with Scrappy, and Scrappy is a web scraping framework that's been around for several years now. I remember for the longest time it only worked on Python 2.7, but as of a couple years ago, they got it working on Python 3, and now you can use the latest version of Python and get rolling with it. So Scrappy itself is a, it's a rather large framework. You can see that they have a dedicated site for it with their own documentation section. So it's going to take you a few days, I think, to become proficient with Scrappy. And if you're somewhat of a beginner Python developer, it might even take you a few months. Um, however, the way this is designed, it's designed to be like a Google search engine, like what the Google bot is as it bounces around the internet and tries to like get all the latest web page information from all the servers. Scrappy is doing the same thing. It's built with that sort of mindset. And uh, fun fact, Google was actually written in Python. All right, number eight is going to be the request library. And we used to use something called URL lib2. And then eventually requests came along several years ago. And now for pretty much most of our HTTP automation and what we use that for is if we're testing web frameworks or we want a Python client that is sitting on the server somewhere and it's communicating with some other RESTful API, because you can have your server that is listening for requests and then it gets a request and then makes a request out to another server. Using something like uh, Python requests is a great way to do that. It's built with the modern web in mind. So like when you're getting JSON data back, request is going to save you a lot of time and, and being able to handle that. All right, so number seven is going to come in at uh, with Ansible. And Ansible is, it's got 42,000 stars on GitHub. And really what this is, is it, it's an entire framework uh, automation platform that handles configuration. And assuming you're some sort of like systems administrator, you're dealing with multiple database uh, databases or multiple database servers, multiple web servers, and tying all that stuff together via configuration. That's a very common problem and corporate development, and it can be very, very daunting. So architects and such get paid a lot of money to handle that sort of thing. Ansible is a tool that is going to help you be able to tie all that stuff together. All right, so number six is going to be HTTPy, and that's 
sort of a play on words for HTTP, which is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. But this is Python's implementation of that. It's a command line friendly HTTP client. So if you want to make some like calls out to a, a web server somewhere that's returning JSON data, XML data, whatever it is, um, you get all kinds of help out of the box when it comes to debugging. It also wires up very well uh, to other third-party scripts and configuration tools. Uh, and it just makes easier debugging when you're dealing with um, dealing with some sort of server out there. All right, guys, so number five is going to go to Keras. And this is Python's deep learning framework that's built on top of TensorFlow. So for anybody wondering why TensorFlow is not on top of Keras, it's because Keras is really just the API, uh, the front-end UI for TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is under the covers here. Uh, Keras is actually now used by tons of uh, very large companies from Uber, um, Yelp, Instacart, ZocDoc, Square, Netflix. I mean, just to name a few that are using Keras. So when it comes to machine learning, Python's leading the pack, and Keras is now kind of emerging as the uh, number one deep learning framework. PyTorch being a second to that. All right, so number four is going to go to Django. Django now has 47,700 stars on GitHub. It's been around for over 10 years now. It powers websites like Pinterest, Instagram, Mozilla, The Onion, and a lot more. It has everything you need for a web framework. It follows the MVC architecture, and it has built-in things like object relational mappers for your database connections, template engines, and middleware, and a whole lot more. All right, so number three is going to go to Flask, which has now surpassed Django. It's also a web framework, but it's considered a micro framework. So where Django has all the batteries included for all kinds of stuff that you're probably not going to need, Python Flask is more about providing just the bare minimum and then having third-party packages that you add on to your application as you see fit. Some of the websites using Flask are Netflix, Airbnb, Reddit, Lyft, and more. All right, so number two is going to come in with The Fuck, and this has nearly 53,000 stars on GitHub. And it's really just an app that's written in Python that corrects your previous console command. So as you can see from here, he's entering a console command, and he realizes that, oh, I didn't mean to write that. He writes in fuck, and it gets rid of what he just did. And that's actually quite a common thing in programming. And it's, it's a rather small program, but you can see, I think, with the name and just the helpfulness, it's certainly exploded on GitHub because it's still pretty new. So for it to have that many stars is pretty impressive. All right, and the number one Python project is YouTube DL, which stands for download. This has nearly 63,000 stars. And really what it's built for is downloading videos for YouTube. However, it has like an impressive list of other websites that you can look at and also grab videos for all these different websites down here. So if you have some sort of project out there that's downloading videos and re-uploading them, hopefully you have copyright um, permission to do that. But this project here, you can see you can download videos from all these different platforms. All right, guys, so that's my top 10 list for Python projects on GitHub at the moment. And if you guys have any other Python projects you want to let me know about, just leave a comment. I appreciate that. And for anybody that's looking to get into web development, I recommend you go to my website, codehawk.com. I have a web development bundle course that is really all of my content together. It's nearly 10 hours of content. I'm, a I'm adding to it all the time, so... There's going to be new stuff. I've already added a couple of videos to this project. And in addition to that, I'm also setting up a Discord server so that you guys can get in contact with me. And uh, if you guys are interested in checking that out, make sure you just look, at, look for that. The link is in the description tab below. It's codehawk.com.